Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Elena, co-founder of Investing Bay. And yeah, so I am a, predominantly a scalper. So I take really quick trades in and out. Um, and obviously, I'm watching the SPX today. So I've got like SPX up with the S&P futures. And yeah, what are you all watching? I'm happy to analyze anything you guys are checking out. Right now, I'm watching to see what we do here because we kind of are in a well, we are in a gap, a really significant gap. I don't know that we're going to take all this out today, um, but we got in there, so that was good. I caught a little downside earlier. I was also watching Tesla earlier. Tesla had a really crazy drop straight out the gate today. If you look back at open, which we've recovered a lot of this, but this came right out of this. Yeah, let's look at open. If I can type in the ticker, there we go. All right, so when I'm analyzing, I usually start from the daily. Um, and I like to like draw, I call it a roadmap, but I like to see what I'm looking at. So I'll go in and mark, like you can see the low from yesterday and today are super similar on coin. So that's going to be something that I would look for for downside. I probably wouldn't worry about downside. And so you can knock out that 205.67. Um, 205 is a really big psychological level. So 205.67, they're so close. So 205 would probably be my alert here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and mark the low of the day as well as the high. And I'm also going to mark up yesterday's levels too, which if you notice, we're kind of ranging here at this 50. Um, previous high, and then we'll also do previous low. And then I'm just going to kind of hop down and I'm going to give myself some price targets here. There's a gap on coin. So let me see. I think we've already addressed this. Nope, we're still in there. So if we jump down on coin to kind of see where we're hanging, we actually just got into that gap. So now that kind of gives this a little more context as far as trading goes. And so like, this looks like we're moving into this well, I don't want to call it a, a bearish pennant, but I'm going to draw a trend line here. And so now what I would be looking for for this gap fill is to take out this trend line with some selling volume, which it looks like they're trying to bounce it right now. But you are still below your 50, so this just needs to develop. But I'm going to go ahead and set a trigger here for you. It's at 211.19 on um, coin. Um, let's see. 211.19. There we go. That'll be your downside trigger. Upside, probably want to wait until you take out the high of the day, honestly, um, to wait for upside, just to make sure you've got some, some buyers in there that are serious. Um, AMD, back to the semis. Okay. Let's see. AMD looks like it's pushing down, but we need a price target. Let's see. Really, really nice push today. I would say our next stop on AMD. The first one is here, which it looks like 154.40. We kind of teased that today. Well, we're like we got 30 cents away from it. And so our next profit label on the downside for AMD is 154.40. Just kidding. It's it is 154. <laughs> Sorry, 149. 98, this previous low right here. And then for upside, uh, we would have to take out today's high and yesterday's high, which it looks like we're going the opposite direction. But just to give you some context here, you see how the sellers are coming in here and they're pushing down, but that's just your next take profit level would be down in here, that 149.98. Um, and then notice again, right around the psych levels, the psychological levels, 150. Um, you may or may not want to, you know, commit to holding all the way down to that 98 cents because you might have a little fight on your hands with the bulls around that 150 level. It looks like the sellers are taking this home this afternoon, or they're trying to anyway. Today has been a really wild day. Did anyone in here take any trades today? I'm just curious. 
I try to SPX a lot, but I'm always curious what other people are watching and looking at. See. Well, we have to take profit level, but it looks like we're about to take it. We're just gonna try. This was the biggest red day that I did not expect. Just yesterday, we were kind of inside most of the time. I saw an iron condor on Netflix. Nice. Netflix has earnings Friday, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I think I saw it on Friday, but I'm not for sure. Yeah. Thursday, I was close. Netflix has really been ranging up here. You guys see that? How we kind of topped out and it's just been bouncing around. Got to figure out the direction. Um, 600, I would say that's 601.59. This would be a downside trigger for sure. Not too much going on in this range. Um, yeah, we're still in the same range as yesterday. You see how choppy it is in here? It's like, th this drop was pretty this morning. I'll give it that. But once we found the bottom for today, it just kind of stayed in this little range. Super choppy. And we're chilling right above like this golden ratio. We don't really have a clear direction in here. But yeah. You like neutral strategies that this is like what you would do that for literally because we don't have a clear direction. It's just burning up sound decay. Let's see. NVIDIA got a haircut today. Goodness. See where NVIDIA is in the grand scheme of things. Mm. I don't know if we filled this or not either. Like a little sliver of a gap down here. We've already filled most of it. This guy, I think we've all been waiting for, to be honest, <laughs> since that earnings. Everyone's kind of been watching this gap. Um, we're not there yet. We got a ways to go, but it's it's back in focus. This gap right here takes us all the way down to the 50. Um, let's see. What, 830 to 822.79. So yeah, I would trigger 830.22. It's like nine points. Really small gap. But it's getting us in the right direction. Um, and then you can see too, NVIDIA double topped in here. It bounced, but you got a lower high, and then here come your bears. This is a huge engulfing right here. We just totally took over yesterday. But it's really interesting because I feel like the NASDAQ, well, not the NASDAQ, but the S&P has kind of rolled over some. Uh, the NASDAQ has been getting a nice trim, but it's like, I don't know, some of these tech stocks, it's like they're holding these bottoms. So it's like, I'm really wondering, well, not Apple. Well, yeah, no, not Apple. But NVIDIA, do you guys see what I mean? Like NVIDIA has pulled back some, but it hasn't pulled back a lot in comparison to the whole index, like the whole um, NASDAQ or the S&P. It's holding up really nice. Microsoft is too, it looks like. It's holding on to that 50 for dear life. Oops. Okay. 
Sorry, guys. I had an alarm set for the four o'clock thing. Let's see. Lots of indecision. I don't think we know what kind of clothes we're going to have. Probably a flat one. UAL, yeah, United. Nice. That was a nice drop on Meta, too. I want to throw the cues up just for like the clothes, just so we can kind of see. And again, if there's any tickers you want me to look at, I'm happy to. There's no volume in here. There's no volume at all. Vix finally woke up and got crushed. <laughs> T-O-L, yeah. Let me type. One. There we go. Okay, now we're good. All right, so the first thing I'm noticing is there's not too much volume in here. Not crazy, but it looks like this is a lower volume stock. All right, let's look up here. Oh, this guy's topped out. There's so many gaps in this. Um... My immediate thought is that this looks bearish uh, just off of this daily. And we made a new low today as well. Um, let me see this. Um, hang on a second. I'm going to check this ATR because I'm not familiar with this ticker. Well, I'm familiar with the company, but I've never traded this ticker. Um, ATR on this is three. So it doesn't move too fast. All right, I'm just gonna go down to like an hour to fit this out. This guy doesn't move very fast so that we don't need a whole bunch of price action to tell a story. All right, so, cause it's gonna take a long time to tell his story. <laughs> it's a slow ticker, it's okay. Um, So anyway, over here, it looks like it's double bottomed already uh, earlier today. And we just don't have any volume right now to get us out of this range. But like for the upside right now, um, you do have a higher low and you're clinging onto this 50. So like if you can push out of this and take back this uh, 113.80, then if the bulls are here for it, then you could probably push back to this uh, golden ratio, that 114.70. Um, and then that's like your battleground to see if you're going to go back up or if you're going to hang below that 200. And then for the downside here, I probably wouldn't worry about that until you take out this, uh, what, 112.66. But there's a really no volume in here, so we can't really tell what it wants to do other than what it did on the daily, which was the bearish. Um, Palantir. Okay, obviously I haven't charted this in a while. <laughs> All right, Palantir is coming up on this giant gap. I know the bulls don't like that. This is going to go from what? Fifth, or sorry, <laughs> 1648 to 1976. So I'll trigger that for sure. 1978 is cool. Um, we're below the 50. Well, get, it's really messy, but you got a head and shoulders up here. Took out the neckline, and now we're just kind of hanging out. We've got a bearish engulfing on today. Um, Palantir has a really low ATR. 
you guys see that like 97 cents on average a day um so you don't need a lot to fib on this either because it's going to take a while but i would say probably just maybe this like this low to this high i would fib out and this is in the short term obviously but since it doesn't move this fast you know it's not going to move crazy unless there's some kind of catalyst um outside of this range so for your downside looks like we got a lower low right here um you're looking for like what is that 21 24 would be your downside trigger here upside you want to get back above that 50 so like what is this it's like 2150 roughly where you tweezer topped and then that would push if the bulls are in there that would take you back to 2196 so i probably set a trigger down here at this low and then maybe one right up here this 2150 okay what did i say 2170 and 2157 sorry 2170 is your tweezer top. Y'all see that? 2170. So that's where the trigger goes. There we go. But yeah, Palantir, it's not a big mover. But that's cool because sometimes you don't want a stock that's chaotic. Ollie. Let's start from the top on Ollie. This looks like, let me zoom out some. We've double topped up here. You can see how it's kind of rolling over. You see that 50 and 200 kind of converging? But this is like down here, this is like the battleground. So like, sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't see. So I have to zoom in like really far. Um, but yeah, so this is like what, uh, 6805, 6857. I'd probably say 68 bucks. Um, would be like your ultimate downside trigger for this. But we got a ways away from that. And our ATR is only like 2.49. So like um, in the short term, I would maybe fib out this because you see how we kind of are stuck in this range. So I would run this low to maybe this high. Um, and this is like still... This is like a nine point fib, so that's gonna. I mean, this is gonna take some time to play out, but um, ew, I'm not crazy about this. Um, okay, so I do see some things in here now that I'm like, it looks like honestly. You do have a couple outliers here on Ollie, but you do have a trend line in here. Do you see that? Like you have a couple of times where, and like the volume is really low where these spikes are. So it's like, or around these spikes. And so it's almost like the market just couldn't absorb these, but you do have a trend line running through here. And you also have like a low that's holding. So like around this golden ratio, do you see that support? So this is actually, it looks like it's in a consolidation. Um, it's just really messy. Uh, but do they have a catalyst or anything coming up? Earnings is a while off. Hmm. There's not, honestly, there's not too much to do here until you take out that low, like right around in here, 70, I would say 70 bucks. Um, and then your upside, you're just waiting to take out this trend line with volume. Like it's tried it a couple times back here, but the, it's like the bulls couldn't sustain the momentum but it is consolidating. It's just really, really messy. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Yikes. What does that look like down here? Uh, that started this morning. There's a gap in there too. I feel like my eyes always go to gaps automatically. <laughs> That's like the life of scalping. If I can't see anything else on the chart, I'm going to see the gap. And this is such a big move that's not like this stock. So like this fib is so skewed because again, this thing doesn't move like, well, let me look, let me say it. Let me check the ATR before I say that. 
Okay, this thing does move. 3254 is your ATR. So that's not bad. And you can see too, the ATR is actually going up, which means this thing has momentum. And you can see that it's actually momentum. <laughs> it's going to the downside, but it does have momentum. That's a nice drop. That is a nice drop. Did this thing have a catalyst or like, oh, was this earnings? Okay, never mind. Big miss on revenue. Okay. But you can kind of see down here how there's not too a ton of volume in this stock. You see all the gaps intraday. But I love a catalyst. I love a good catalyst. I just love watching the last little bit of the market because it's like I don't know if I don't know what it is but it's like it feels like the last couple minutes it gets really crazy I hope everyone caught some of this downside that was a really pretty drop today Are you all more like swing traders, day traders? Like, I'm just curious. Hopefully everybody has long terms. Looks like support is holding in here. We'll see. Give me just one second. I'm going to run and grab my bubble tea off the porch. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, I love the tarot. tarot. I guess it's like tarot root. I don't know. But, um, let's see. Yeah, I think scalping is definitely less exposure to the market, which is a good thing, especially with options. And then also, depending on what you're trading, <laughs> um, not all options are made for us on the long side. So it's really nice when you can have something that's profitable in like a short amount of time. Um, but there's a whole nother, I mean, that's a whole rabbit hole on mindset and stuff, but yeah, <laughs> I do like short-term trades. Today's been a crazy day for sure. Never had tarot. It kind of looks like a potato. We definitely found support. And you see the volume coming in on the buy side? It's They're trying to get up past this 200. But we did find a bottom. At least for today, I think. But what time? Yeah, it's like 12 minutes. Unless there's like a big dump. Which, again, <laughs> that's not out of the question. But you do have some buying volume coming in here. But I also would say like, um, 
for the amount of buyers that are coming in, I should, if it's a strong, you know what I mean? If it's strong, they should be advancing. These candles aren't the strongest, not yet anyway. Yeah, it just looks like there's like a little divergence in here because it's like the buyers, the volume is picking up, but these candles are not bullish. But they're not really bearish either. It's kind of like nothing. It's a nothing burger. Views aren't filling this 200 either. And here come the bears. The bears aren't really making any, well, right this minute, because today they did make some progress, but in this range, they're not making any progress. Here comes some sellers. A lot of volume coming in. It's like a dog fight. But I see why the bulls are like this because if we fill this gap, we're going below 5,000 on the SPX. And that's a big deal. Like 5,000 is not an easy level to crack for either side. I'm just curious too, like, what do you all feel like um, when you're analyzing your charts and things? Like, what do you think is like your biggest struggle there? It's like, I know technicals, there's so many, like, there's so many different ways to do it. But like people have different things that they struggle with.
Yeah, there's a lot of distractions just in general in life. There's tons of distractions, especially if you try it off a phone. I have to like kill my notifications and make sure that like nothing's coming across my screen to distract me. Yeah, I think it's faster. I think it's faster. I tried to trade on the computer and I feel like there's just a lot of clicks. Well, for E-Trade, like I like Thinkorswim, but E-Trade, there's way too many clicks for me personally. <laughs> I don't like all the clicking. Especially scalping, it's so fast paced. Like you really just need to be able to execute as fast as possible. I'm curious to see tomorrow if we like gap down to fill the gap or something. You really never know. Or if we gap up and just take off again. Nvidia got beat down today. What else is going on over here? XLK, not surprising. Japan got cooked today too. Well, really, yesterday, um, the Hang Seng and the Nikkei got hit really hard. And then the Hang Seng barely, I mean, it's up two points, but it got beat down really bad yesterday. Oil's cooled off a bit. Well, a lot, actually. But I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I read yesterday that they were going back into the SPR for oil to keep oil prices down. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, I think it's like when I first started trading, I started on Robinhood. And so like, I just was always used to trading on the phone. And then like, I've gone to different brokerages since then, but I'm always on the phone. NVIDIA's, I mean, if you had, a, if you had a good entry, then this, I mean, it's very dramatic, but honestly, compared to some of these other stocks, like I was saying earlier, NVIDIA has really held up well through the sell-off. Considering what it just did, like this run up it's just had, like this is not, this is fine. Now I will say, you know, it's game time because we are coming up on this 50. Um, and this does give head and shoulders vibes. But for now, she's holding up, okay. But yeah, I feel like we've been spoiled. On if you had Nvidia or SMCI this year, I feel like you've been spoiled. We can have we can take a little hit, a little profit taking. I actually wanted to look at Crocs today too because I don't know if you guys saw this, but it said Crocs was doing a collab with Pringles, and I was like, that's the most unnecessary collaboration I've ever seen in my life. It looks like the market doesn't care. But apparently they have like an ankle strap where you can put your Pringles on your crops. Sure, there's a big market for that.
Yeah, that's a good entry. A hundred dollars on Nvidia. That's under a hundred. That's you're fine. And that's pre-split, I'm sure. So yeah. You're fine. I hope they make a movie one day about Meta and how the stock rose from the ashes. If you're ever having a bad day, just look at Meta's chart and it's like, you can come back from anything, literally. This gap though. <laughs> Gap is gnarly. Yep, here come the bears. Right into the bell. Yeah, do you see how we closed right here on this, like, what is that, 5120? Tomorrow, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We might gap. We might bounce. But that's really, really a big level to watch because that's where we got hung up on today. Let's see. Wait, David, what do I do if the market's closed? <laughs> Just analyze like, you can look at futures. <laughs> see. Yeah, whatever you feel like talking about. <laughs> or currencies. Do you do anything with that? I don't. I do not. There goes the S&P. Let's see. Does anyone have any questions, like trading questions, investing, like I'm a day trader, but I've swung before, like I started out as a swing trader. I'm really big on like the mindset stuff. That's like my wheelhouse trading mentality and like all that is that's my wheelhouse. So nice drop. Um, how did I get into trading psychology? I kind of was forced into it by becoming a trader. Um, it's almost one of those things that you don't really know, like how you're going to react in a situation until you're in it. And like, it's unique because your money is directly attached to how you react and how you feel. So like, um, really just like learning myself like the more I traded the more I got to know myself and like I don't know the best way I can kind of describe trading the only thing I can compare it to would be like it's almost like you giving you're giving yourself an addiction by learning about the market and how fast you can make money but then you have to like learn how to also manage this addiction and you're ex constantly exposed to it if you trade a lot so it's just a lot of like getting to know yourself, impulse control, um, meditating helps, just learning how to like be at peace and solitude. Like that's big because a lot of people can't be, they can't sit still, like they have to be doing something. And so like learning how to be still is huge for traders. I've seen people just jump in trades just because like they were bored or you know, they felt like something might happen at some point, but there was no confirmation. So it's really like learning how to just be still and, and be reactive. And risk management, yeah, risk management is big. I did want to look at the VIX. I know I clicked it a couple times, but I'm just curious to see where we're at. We did finally bounce.
Yeah, the big, if you notice, like it's getting higher lows. It's almost like. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll draw it on here. But it's almost like an ascending triangle in a way, but it's messy, like right through here. So like this would be a level to watch that, so like 1956. Does anyone else even trade the VIX? I'm really big on like trading this too, like just watching it and knowing like, especially when it's in support, it's like if it's like sitting around support for a long time, you can kind of just park there. Um, not to like wait for the worst, but the VIX does tend to consolidate around support before these big sell-offs happen. You can kind of just ride it up. Um, I wouldn't say do that with options because they're on a time limit, you know, but shares, it's definitely cool because the VIX gets busy when it wants to. It gets crushed a lot, but it does get busy when it wants to. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I also wanted to see Boeing today too after the whistleblower comments. I read yesterday um, that the whistleblower said that all the be all the Boeing planes should be grounded, and I thought that was a little bit terrifying. There's a big gap, but we're way far from that right now. I think Boeing is just trying to find support at this point. If you had to ask me back in like 2021, 2020, 2020, like I would have thought BA would be at 300 by now. Like it's crazy. We haven't even recovered from the pandemic yet. Um, BA has a lower ATR too, I believe. Not super low, but it's not crazy like four. So what would we say? Uh, I mean, we have, I say we have support right now. It's holding 170. We're just trying to, you see, we closed right there. Um, but it's holding on with a thread because there's no volume for real. And like, it's weak. This, these buyers right here are weak. So we'll see. We got a little tiny dragonfly, but we didn't even take out we barely took out yesterday's high. So this really could go either way. Boeing's in a really, really tight spot right now. See the, the bulls are kind of holding the line, but like they're not advancing anywhere. So we'll see, this needs time to cook for sure. Maybe like right through here or something. Um. Got a little baby inverse head and shoulders, maybe, but you really don't have too much. Uh, I don't even want to give it that, to be honest. I don't even want to give it that. Because, like, we also have a trend line right through here that we haven't taken out. But if you were looking at this as an inverse head and shoulders, we still can't. That golden ratio is our neckline at that 170, and we're still having trouble with that. So I would, I'm not bullish on this yet. But... um. If you think about like Dow theory and just, and this is really, really short term, but if you look into like Dow theory and it has like the four stages right here where we are, and this almost like this, I would look at this like shoulder, shoulder, head before I just look at this right here. But either way, this looks like it's an accumulation in the short term. So like for us to go higher, we would need bulls to step in here to push this thing. Um, and we don't have that right now. <laughs> they tried, but they haven't done it yet. So this could do this for a while. If we take out 170, um, obviously we're just looking at more downside. This RSI is pretty oversold too on the daily. And they have earnings. 
24th. So like, what is that next week? Yeah, I think Boeing's more of a fundamental, fundamental thing. Snap. I've been looking at an island gap on Snapchat for, it feels like forever. Literally, it's been, it's been three years. This is like the prettiest island gap, but we're nowhere near that. <laughs> We are nowhere near that. These gaps are so crazy over here. I feel like the market is just so unforgiving of Snapchat since TikTok has hit the scene. And this one has a really low ATR as well. I probably wouldn't trade options on this because I usually like to have an ATR of at least one just to make sure that we can actually get somewhere. Um, but looking at this, look how hard it's rejecting up here, like every time. So for your upside, 11.23, I would trigger that. But even still, like this has had some really nasty rejections too. So here, I would more so like to wait and see um, if we can take this out on the 1069 to the downside and then see if we can come on down. Cause like this upside, it's like all this volume and the bull still couldn't sustain this. That's not bullish. Especially when the daily looks like this. But again, back to Dow theory, it's, it's in a stage one, like we've got a clear support. We just don't have the bulls to get up off the floor. We don't have anybody to push the price up. We did, but then they got, <laughs> they tried, but then earnings, right? It's not a good sign, but this is basing for sure. Um, Broadcom got cooked today, it looks like. But even still, like this is another example. All the selling on the indices, look how this is holding up. For now, I say that because it's like, we're still hanging on to that 50, but like, I know it looks crazy on the short term, but like this pullback is, it's really not that bad. Looks like it's just a little gap fill. We'll see what happens here on this 50 though. We'll see what happens here. United Health, so many gaps over here. Thing. There's literally gaps everywhere. And then there's one, two. Okay, so this guy right here, let's see. I'm probably, I'm just going to fit this out from below this gap down here. And then we'll see what we have to do to retrace all that. And this again, this is super short term. So like, we're getting these higher lows for now. But yeah, I would trigger this high. Today's high, like 488. If we can take that out, maybe we retest that 500 level. And then obviously we were, we're going to need the volume for this, <laughs> but um, there's a little gap up to like 511. That's a nice little ride. Just if, even if you just wait for the gap fill, that's a nice little ride past 500. And that kind of takes some of the risk off of trading up to that big spike level. This gap starts around 501, 80-ish.
but these it just doesn't look bullish like if you look at these uh like MACD and RSI on these lower time frames, it's not very promising. It's like barely still bullish up top. And you can see we're hanging out under this 200. So this, this will be interesting to see on the 50th on the daily. Micro strategy got cooked today. I think um, Taiwan Semiconductor has earnings too this week, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they just had it on the 10th. Okay, just kidding. But this was last week? Yeah, okay. I thought this was this week. Just kidding. It was last week. Um... Yeah, just like NVIDIA, this has held up too pretty nicely since that since we started pulling back. Intel, not so much. <laughs> There's your AMD. AMD definitely rolled over. Let's see. QCOM. That is that is a double top. That is a double top. Um, but it's it's shown on the 50. The 50 is like the neckline. I love when you look at charts and stuff works out like that. Like how crazy is this that the neckline is like right where we're at. So this like decision time here as well, like the bulls are going to have to figure something out if they're going to hold this up. Let's see, crowd strike. Looks like they got a little pullback today. Such a pretty drop the last couple of days. And then delete all this. Nike has been a little all over the place. Okay, this I like though. Look at this gap. We got a partial fill on this, but we're actually, it looks like trying to get back up there. The little one down here. I'm gonna trigger Nike at like 95.52. And that's gonna be a upside trigger for this gap fill if we get up there. That's a pretty, I mean, it's not a bad ride. It's like five points. Um, this is unfortunate. This guy is really crazy too. Um, I'll trigger this, but we have a ways to go for that. And we're also still below the 200 over here. We're in a death cross. So like, this will be like dead cat vibes, like a dead cat bounce if we get in there, but we'll see. Cause it's still, even if we fill this gap, it would still less be us make, having like lower high. Like we really need to take out some of this to be bullish again, but I'm here for the short term if they want to do that. And see this gap fill over here just got, I mean this gap over here just filled with this drop. So we'll see Nike. It pretty much just double bottoms. Y'all see that? There's your two touches. So if we take this out. That would be really, that would be bearish if we took that out. This is like a perfect retracement though. Like we went up, 
we rolled and we came back over. We just got this Palantir alert. What did it do? Oh, it's dropping. So yeah, if we come on down, 2083 is our next stop here. Looks like. My lithium stock's getting cooked. It's crazy. What's on the fun list? What do I have a fun list? Fisker? Fisker's gone? I did not know that. Did they go bankrupt? Or did they just get delisted? I did not know that. I kind of want to Google what happened. Hang on, I want to see what happened to Fisker. Oh, it's on the OTC now. It's four cents a share. That's crazy. I actually did not know that. Sensei Tesla. Yeah, we'll see what NVIDIA does. I think this the next couple days or so should be interesting with NVIDIA. Because it is still ranging. Like you can kind of see we today we did have this bearish engulfing, but like we're still in this range. So until we come on down out of this. Yikes. I did not know that. I'm not huge into the EV tickers except Tesla. I guess I'm biased. I don't know. But um, I definitely did. I knew Fisker was having financial problems, but I didn't know it was that crazy. Um, also Lucid. I really like the Lucid cars, but I know they've been going through stuff too. Crazy. Charge point, that's crazy. Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? I don't know if anyone was trading like when Nikola IPO'd, but like I was there for the IP, not there, but I, I traded the IPO and like it literally has never been the same since. But Nikola, if you're not familiar with the story of Nikola, it's a comedy. The story is a comedy. Um, but yeah, it's wild. That's wild. Let's see. I think I need to clean up my watch list. I have a lot of watch lists on here that I don't use anymore. Google, this was a pretty reversal. Um, I feel like Google's losing a little steam up here. No, they're not. <laughs> they are not. EVs are having a rough year. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Tesla was like the worst performer in the whole S and P 500 for the year. Like they're down really hard on the year. Like, what was it, like 40%? I mean, obviously today didn't help. And that was something I read like a couple days ago. Let's just have a look-see. So Tesla for this year, 2024. Um, no, January. Okay. So what is that? Like, yeah, roughly 40%. 39, eh, give or take. I know my math is not totally on point, but 
We're roughly down 40% from uh, this year. That's crazy. That is crazy. And it still looks like it's rolling over. That's the thing. Like, look at the 50 and 200 converging here. Like, it doesn't look like it's getting any better. So hopefully we can all get some really cheap Tesla shares. Wow, are you serious? The line coming from that is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, this story is not, it's just not, I don't know, like they need some something positive to come out. ASAP. <laughs> they need something positive to come out. Stat. I feel like my day break lines are a little overwhelming on this chart, but that's okay. Yeah, man. Tesla, if we take this out, our next stop, well, just from this fib, I just drew, it's like 120.93. And I think I was joking like a couple months ago. I was like, Tesla's going to 100. I was totally kidding. 100% kidding. Did not mean to like, because I have Tesla shares. Did not mean to speak that into existence. Yeah, that's kind of like one of the things that I was worried about with EVs, because it's like, well, I wouldn't say worried about, but like, I know like California has like a law where they, they want everybody to be electric by a certain time. And it's like, for the average household, like that's a lot of, that's expensive on the maintenance side. Like it might be affordable maybe to get the car, but like if something goes wrong with the car, like that's where it gets kind of like, everybody can afford a $30,000 battery. And for me, I'm, I live in a really small mountain town, right? So. We only have one EV charger here. So it's not like I have access to like all these mechanics and charging stations. Like it's not like that here. Really interesting. I think the people that have Teslas here have to go like to Knoxville for the work, which is like an hour and a half away. see Alaska Airlines the AA or sorry the FAA is due to ground stop for Alaska these airlines looks like the stock didn't care unless it just didn't react yet, but maybe it doesn't care. Yeah, it looks like they shook it off. There was a little selling earlier, but it looks like they shook it right off. That I think that was a big lesson for me too in the market. It's just like, differentiating between like my personal sentiment and like market sentiment <laughs> that was a big lesson for sure I know one week I had um I swung Boeing calls like over the weekend and then there was an accident like a plane crash and I was just like oh my gosh like my calls are going to be done and then we opened up Monday and rallied and it's just like you never know like, you really never know how the market's going to react to anything. This will be interesting to see tomorrow. Yeah. 
Boeing. Um, well, one thing with BA though, it's like, they're very much institutionally held. Like they're really, really heavily institutionally held. And then also um, they make, they make not just like planes for us, like they're really heavy into like the military stuff too. So it's not all about, you know, like I have a whole war stock list somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where it is, but I do have one somewhere. Um, but Boeing is, is a part of that. So Oh, where is it? There they are. War stocks. This isn't my updated list, but there are some war stocks here. Like I'm holding a couple of these actually. My Lockheed shares have been doing really well this year. Cat's good. Um, but yeah, I have another list somewhere that's got some more stocks. I'm not sure which one of these it's under. This looks like it's just hanging out, consolidating. The Neo is $3. I had some guy on Twitter, um, well, I won't say what he said, but it was not very nice. And he told me he was going to like 10x his money on Neo. And I was like, Godspeed. And this was a couple of years ago. So I hope he's okay. I feel like traders are either super, super friendly or they're really, really mean. Like there's no in between. Same. Are there any other charts you guys want to look at? I know I'm kind of just clicking through. Um, or any questions. Like I said, I'm happy to answer anything um, that you guys have trading related. I'm friendly. I'm friendly. I hope I'm friendly. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, ALB. Let's see. Looks like we're consolidating. This ATR is like six, so we don't have to go too crazy with our levels here. I'm going to grab like probably just this right through here. So like let's fit from 106.69. That's too much. One. That's just really a wide fit. And I just don't think she's going to move like this. Okay, we'll just go to this little high right here. All right, and then I'm going to jump down. So you can kind of see like we rolled over, right? Death cross. So we're awkward. This is bearish. Lower highs. Took out the golden ratio here. So we stopped here. So like it looks like the next stop here is like 112.47. And like this low right here, it is it is important, but it's like a lower time frame, like an intraday level. So these aren't as significant as like a daily or a weekly price level or even quarterly. So here, um, if you can trigger that, like what is what did I say? One, what is that? 113.95, your next stop is 11247. And then 109.77 if you keep selling off. But yeah, the bulls had a hard time trying to push this up today. And then upside here, maybe like, probably I would say 120. I would want to be back above 120 here. 120.03 is cool. But that just gets you out of this range because it looks like it's going to be choppy in here. Oh, I just saw this. Um, this is from the whistleblower. It said a whistleblower just told a Senate hearing that workers were jumping on pieces of airplane to make the plane fit together. 
He also said he would not put his family on a Boeing 787. That's crazy. Let's see. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Really and truly, like, tomorrow, what I'm looking for is, like, just to see if we continue in this downtrend or if we start kind of basing again. Because, like, um, we still have a ways to go on this, the, not a ways, but... We still have, we made a lower low today and we also have sellers coming in. All these things are still bearish um, on these bigger time frames. I know like we might be a little oversold in some places, but it doesn't even look like it. It looks like we had a little bounce at the end. So we'll kind of see who steps up tomorrow and, and the rest of the week. And also, I mean, we have like, I don't know, a ton of Fed speakers. <laughs> we have a ton of Fed speakers this week. Um, so yeah, we'll see if we get any more any more momentum in here. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. And we're coming up on a new earnings season as well. So that always brings volatility. I'm just catching up on news to see if there's anything um Anything notable for tomorrow? That's crazy. It says Tesla has spent $200,000 to advertise on X. Yes, there's no friends and family discount. Um, Tesla to cut 14% of its workforce at the Buffalo plant. I saw that. Sorry, I'm trying to watch the chat and read the news at the same time. Uh, we just put more sanctions on Venezuelan oil. UBS has got job cuts coming down. UBS, not UBS. Google is doing some international layoffs. I feel like there's never a shortage of market news. Like I definitely checked my headlines like this afternoon and now it feels like I haven't seen anything because there's like so much stuff popping up again. Right at four, it's like everything comes out at four. Um, I don't see anything else insane. So Blinken's going to China next week.
They are. This is, um, I don't know, David, I like these analyze your trade sessions. Like this is pretty much what I do all day anyway. <laughs> it's just like look at charts. So this is pretty cool. Thanks for having me. Does anyone have any other charts they want to look at or anything they want to talk about? <laughs> um, What's my favorite? What, my favorite stock? Oh, my favorite ticker is SPX for sure. Um, I did want to look at this thing on Crocs. I saw a setup over here a few weeks ago, but I don't know if it's still like developing. I'm just curious. Oh yeah, look at this. On this monthly, it looks like they rejected some, but yeah, it's not ready on Crocs. Um, yeah, no, SPX is definitely my favorite. And there's a reason though, like I have a really, I would say I have a really short attention span. And so I like to trade SPX because it's so fast. So you can make your money really fast and then you can go do something else. Like, I don't like to sit and watch things develop all day. Like, it's just not my thing. Um, how bad are black candles? You mean like on a white and black chart? It's just a selling candle. Or you mean like the institutional candles? Oh yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say they're good or bad. They're just like, when I read candles, it's almost like reading music. So it's just a bigger note. Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah, the candle is significant, but what's the context of the candle? Like, are you trending a certain direction? Are you going the opposite direction? Like that's more important than the candle itself. But they are cool because it's telling you like, this is a big amount that's happening, but like the, the bigger picture, that's what you want to get from it. Like the context. Mm -hmm. And that's with any candle. That's with any candle. Because like a candle is only as strong as what came before it. Or weak. Every candle is like defined by the, the candle that came before it. And the candles that came before it. see oh well here I'll tell you guys a funny story <laughs> the other day um I did not know that there was a limit of how many alerts you could have on trading view and I think it, the limit is like 2,000 they told me I had to delete some alerts so if that gives you any indication of how much I chart um, <laughs> they told me to take some off so It actually was hard to do, actually. I had to figure out which trades I didn't want to see anymore. That was hard. Let's see. Oh, I did want to look at the calendar, though, and see. Um, let's see. I'll just do it over here. To see who has earnings coming up. No, today's Wednesday. Thursday. Oh, we talked about this. Netflix. Um, that's really the only one I care about on this. Let's see who's after hours. Nope, that's after, so who's before? TSM. I think it's the time zone. It has to be. 
Because this thing just said TSM. I know I'm not tripping right now. TSM. Do you guys see this? It says TSM earnings was on the 10th. It wasn't. It it's this it's tomorrow. I knew I wasn't tripping because I made an earnings calendar this week and I remember putting it on there. So yeah, TSM is this week. Nokia, Blackstone, Alaska Air. This one should be eventful considering they just got grounded. Ally. Um, and then what's tomorrow? Friday, American Express, Procter & Gamble, SLB. Next week, I just want to see when it gets crazy on earnings. Um, big tech is what I'm looking for. I think it's the week after. Tesla's next week. EMPH, Texas Instruments, Visa. These credit card companies have been making bank off these interest rates. Um, AT&T. Yeah. Meta. Wednesday the 24th. IBM. Here we go. Thursday. So yeah, next week, like I said, volatility is on the way. <laughs> volatility is on the way. Thursday. There's your oil. And then the following week, where is Apple and Amazon? I'm sure there's an easier way to find this information, but I chose the most difficult way possible. Here we go. There's Amazon, 30th of April. Pinterest, AMD. Okay, you know what? I just want to know when Apple reports. So I'm just going to do it this way. Hopefully it's accurate. Um, May 2nd, Apple on May 2nd. Coffee just hit a new all-time high. This is crazy. Wow. The IMF is basically talking about how there's a lot of risk, like our financial situation that puts all these risks on the global economy, which I feel like we already knew that. <laughs> we already know. Yeah, that's all the news for now. I'm sure they'll dump it on us later on today. But thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I'm always around. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not good at like wrapping these things up. Wait, is that a ticker or like, thank you? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, we can chart it. No, anytime, anytime. I'm obsessed with trading and markets, all this stuff. It's just like, 
it's changed my life. So I'm always happy to share, share knowledge. It looks like the fear and greed index took a dive again. Let's see. We'll see how this goes tomorrow. It should be fun. It should be interesting. The Dow hasn't really done too, too much in the last, it's still in this range. You see how the bulls like came in and pushed back. So yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, we have Fed speakers literally all day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Usually, like, at 4 o'clock, I'm always asleep. Like, I take, I call them my aftermarket naps. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, if you guys don't have any other questions, that's all I have for you today. Um, if you like want to like connect or tap in, like everything that we have is on investingbay.com. Like it's all there. Um, but yeah, this was fun. This actually was a lot of fun today. <laughs>